Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah, back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And I'm here with the OG, the originator, the only nader, big nader, Nate Dog. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Yo, it's going to be a day today. Oh, it's going to be man. a lot of heartache today. Wow. Oh, I'm about to, oh, man. How you doing, Nate? I'm doing great. I, I'm spiritually intact and physically ready to move around. Okay, that's what's up. That's why I like yeah. to hear. You know what, Nate? Yeah. I can't. This is not a. Uh, this is not a, a sponsor, but I'm gonna go ahead and crack this open because I need this. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I had my coffee, but uh, yeah, producer he, Ren mm. messed it up, so it's okay. It's all right, Ren. I forgive you. Oh, oh thanks for giving me that moment, Nate. Uh, I needed to drink that. I need some juice today, Nate. You know why I need some juice, Nate? Why you need some juice? I need some juice because Cowboys didn't have no juice. Oh, they had juice? No, Nate. My boys had some juice. Not collectively. Uh, Okay, not collectively. Listen, I'm telling y'all, just like we told y'all on the last episode, we talking Cowboys today. Okay, this is our last time talking just all Cowboys, all Cowboys for a while. We're going to get to some life stuff. We'll get to some off-season conversations. But today, we got to talk about it. Because we previewed the second round. Of the playoffs. Yes. We, we, we talked about that last week in last week's episode. We told y'all ahead of time, if y'all don't want to hear about football, then turn it off. Because that's what Nate and I are going to talk about today. That's what we talked about last week. That's what we're going to talk about today. Cowboys got some stuff that we need to address. And we have to start by reviewing what in the heck was that, Nate? The people want to know. Okay, this is our platform. So we can talk about it. What in the heck was that performance? The... Uh... And like you said, collectively. Collectively. Uh, ju- Juice-wise, uh, you saw some good things. You yeah. saw some people playing lights out. Okay. Because let's start with the 49ers offense. Mm. McCaffrey. Shut down. Debo. Shut down. Uh, 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 big tight end. Uh, Kittle. George not, Kittle. Not shut down. Not shut down. He, he kind of got five, 95. Yes. Uh, just... The way they played, their they quarterback was steady. Nothing yeah. special. Mm-hmm. He just studied. He never had that fatal uh, blow that hurt his team. Did he have a lot of pressure? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had pressure during yeah, the game. That boy was running yeah, like a chicken. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and But he played well and under control. So our defense, you know, if, if we would have said a week ago, hey, man, if, if our defense hold them down nine, nine, 19 points, yeah. man, we could trip up over 21 points. Final, final yeah, score was yeah. 19 to 12. Yeah, I know. But, we, but if we would have said yes. our defense hold these guys to 19 points, do you think the Cowboys should have been victorious if we would have just went off of that without looking? You know what, Nate? I would have added a little extra on there. I'm with <laughs> you. I'm, 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 I'm riding right. with you right now. Okay, I'm right. shotgun. Okay? Shotgun, no shotgun. Right. If you would have told anybody – that you were going to play the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round, that you were going to hold the defensive player of the year, not officially announced yet, but he will be, Nick Bosa. Yes, sir. You are going to hold Mr. 18 and a half sacks. Mr. 18 and a half sacks. You're going to hold him to no sacks. No sacks, Nate. You are going to disarm Brennan Ayuk, which was their leading receiver. Yes. Take him out the game completely. Yes. You were going to totally disarm... Mr. Christian McCaffrey in the running game and the passing game, you were going to disarm Debo Samuel in the running and the passing game, and you're going to give up five catches to George Kittle. Oh, Not and then, oh, uh, what would you have said? Oh, I'd have been like, we, we got this. And you got, what, three sacks at least? Yes. I think it was three sacks yes. on Purdy. He was, yeah. I, I can't even count how many pressures he had. Man, he hadn't seen nothing. He, 
he passed the grade because uh, you know who's under who's under more pressure, Nate, in the game. Who was under more I duress? Think, I think Purdy or Dak. Purdy was. I, I think Purdy was without question. Uh, and I, well, I know he was. And the thing that amazed me is this kid came through it unscathed. Uh, testament to the coaching staff, quarterback, coach, offensive line, to continue to battle, knowing that things weren't going their way, uh, continue to play. They had two key drives, and unfortunately those key drives came out the bad moments for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, that part of the, the team was juiced and ready yeah. to go. It was they they sacked him twice. Yeah. There was yeah. two sacks. It was early. They yeah. had two sacks on him. Now, quarterback hurries, five, looks like five quarterback <coughs> hurries. Dallas was hurried four times, sacked once. Now, unfortunately, it's another part to this, so it's two more parts. Even our special teams answered the bell. Two for three. Two, two for three. three, and we got a, 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 a fumble. Mm-hmm. Punch and, out. Yeah, and so Kevin Joseph, uh, great job yanking the ball out, getting it loose. A great recovery. I forget the kid that recovered it. That was uh, Damone uh, Clark. Yeah, Damone Clark. Great uh, special teams play, son. Especially did, coming off the neck. Where did they get the yeah. ball at, Nate, when he punched that out? What right about that? Inside the 30? Inside the 30. Okay. I th- did we get three? three? Three. But you fell in at three. As soon as you got the ball, you yeah. had three. Yes. So uh, we didn't take advantage of that. Uh, so two of the three phases, I think, played well. Mm. And well enough to win because we had a – a 40-some yard punt uh, kickoff return. So we played well enough in two phases. And normally that is enough to uh, take you over the top. No, oh, but hold on there. That's a D grade, though. Two for three? That's 66%. But still, my coaches used to tell me if we can win two decisively okay. two out of the three phases, and that one phase that don't win just hold its own and don't make mistakes – you normally should win the game. What did the offense not do? The offense did not hold their end of the bargain. Okay. The offense did the worst thing you could do, which let's turn the ball over. Oh. Turn, two things that could hurt you. One of them is you never want to do, and let's turn the ball over. Huh? The second one is don't have penalties in critical situations. Agreed. And so there was one drive, yeah. Yeah. So we we did both. Yeah. We had penalties in critical situations, and we turned the ball over twice. Agreed. And it hurt us. So uh, the the thing that uh, that bothers you is the fact that our, our quarterback wasn't seeing what was going on. And uh, when when you, when you say that. Because this is a big, big discussion, and we can spend some time on it, too. It's all over the radio. Yes. It's all over ESPN, NFL Network, any sports cast that you can turn to. They're going to be talking about Dak Prescott. It's going to be the longest offseason of his life. Yes, it is. And I'm honestly worried about him. Yeah. I'm honestly worried about him. Um, It's no secret that he is primarily responsible for the turnovers in this game. Yes. Primarily is the term I'm using because right. there's other people who contribute to those as well. But right. he had the power to make good decisions, bad decisions, put the ball in good placement, bad placement. That stuff falls on him. The interception of Michael Gallup. How many people were responsible for the interception, Nate? You know what? I, I, I didn't like the route that Gallup ran because it seemed like it was lazy. Now, this is an offensive lineman talking. I hear you. That's what I'm asking. It like the route was lazy. Okay. And then I don't know if it was a comeback Roll away. Uh, what we or was it. he supposed to float out, float, float away from it? And so you'll tell me what, what it was supposed to be. Been. But I, I felt like this. Galloway, Michael Gallup, excuse me. The thing that, and you alerted me to this, and I watched it all year because I, I thought he wouldn't be back this year, and I thought he wouldn't be the player we saw before because of the injury. Correct. But once – I started looking real careful, and I saw he couldn't do comebacks, not with power and explosions, or he couldn't do start and stop moves with power and explosions. Yeah, I'm saying we can't throw him that. 
We we as a offense can't throw him these type balls. Now if you got him moving and he continue to move yeah. or if he's in the red zone Cross and he routes, go yeah. To his post. yeah so now you, it, it's to your advantage. But now I see this mm-hmm. and you alerted me to this. Correct. You you don't think the DB has some knowledge to this? Well, I can tell you this. Yes, to your point, I don't believe that Michael Gallup is back to old Michael Gallup form yes. yet. Okay, he got paid like he is, right? But he physically needs this off season to get back. To yes, form. he does. Okay, he spent this entire off season trying to get back healthy. He wasn't spending this off season trying to get better. Right. He was trying to get healthy. Right. And I don't want that to sound bad, but that's the reality. When you're injured, you're trying to get back on the field. Right. right? Yeah. And once I'm back on the field, now I can work on getting better. But my my primary is get to where I actually can get back to playing. Right. That doesn't mean that when I'm back to playing, I'm back to old me. Right. Okay, so I think that's where he was at this year. I think next year, I think we should see <clears throat> the resurgence of the Michael Gallup that everybody's come to know and love. Right. He has made some plays this year, but to your point, to your point, it hasn't come off of the type of routes that is going to require him to put a lot of stress on that knee. Right. Okay? And that doesn't mean that his knee's hurting him. It doesn't mean that it's he's incapable. It just means that right now it just doesn't have the power or the juice required right. to run those routes. Right. I think it was a bad finish of the route for him because mm-hmm. the route to my understanding this is a jason garrett jason garrett call okay it's a mirrored concept meaning that you have the same route on the outsides and it's called a roll away you typically run 14 yards put your foot in the ground and come right back down your stem cheating towards the outside so right. you come down your stem right. the same line that you ran but then you you can you fade it towards the sideline to right. be quarterback friendly right to right. protect the ball so if it's an incomplete pass, where's the ball go? Out of, out of bounds. bounds. He didn't come out that break. <clears throat> right. When he came out that break, he was standing straight up, which gave the defensive back the same amount of the same availability to go get the ball as he did at that point, right? There was no separation because he didn't come out the break. He stood up out the break. So now the DB is pretty much running the route for him. That's what happened. So didn't finish the route. So that particular play, it was two parties that were guilty. It was Michael Gallup who didn't run the route completely, and it was Dak Prescott who threw the ball after seeing that Gallup didn't run the route completely because that is a timing throw. Dak did not throw it on time. Had he thrown it on time, it probably would have just been an incompletion. Right. But because he was late with it, he got intercepted. Wow. So on that particular play, two parties are guilty. doesn't matter. The result is the same. Turnover. Big play. Because you can't give the team in the playoffs more opportunities, especially a team that controls the ball like San Francisco. So that's interception number one. Interception number two, Nate, how many parties are guilty? One. One one because when you have underneath coverage, and and like I said, I'm speaking from a lineman. I'm not speaking from yeah, knowledge of but when I but if I'm a quarterback and I look and I'm looking at you. Yeah. And that let me tell you something, billboard behind you is behind you. And then I look and something behind, yeah. okay, can I get it over his head? Well, something standing back there behind that billboard, I'm not going there. It's not worth the because risk. Because my vision is yeah. blocked. And I see no way to get it over because mm-hmm. I have not enough space. Okay. So from Robin's line point, I want to do that. Okay. You know, now, and see, my question now is, was C.D. Lamb supposed to keep moving? Because he got to where he's supposed to go. It seemed because he sat down like he was definite and sure where he was supposed to be. So going to that route now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that two parties are guilty as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. But primarily one. Okay. So I'm not going to exclude C.D. on this one because it was cover two, meaning that there is five underneath cover guys you have the two cornerbacks who were responsible for the flats mm-hmm. and they actually they actually sank a little bit because they didn't have any threats in their flats so it almost looked like a cover four okay so right. two cornerbacks sitting in the flats all right on the edges of the of the field near the sidelines then you have three internal linebackers and or a, a nickel back okay that's playing the outside right. linebacker position those guys are now responsible for Two hook drops, okay? We mean they're five to eight yards. They're going to sit back there about five to eight yards off the ball, and then they have the middle linebacker who's going to sit right over the middle of the of the formation. Right. C.D. Lamb's job on that is to run an option route. He's, his job is literally versus man-to-man, 
I'm going to run, and I'm going to run an option route, which is what he did, on that middle linebacker. I'm going to run up. I'm going to act like I'm sitting. I'm going to draw him to me. As soon as he comes to me, I'm going to break away the opposite direction. Okay? That's right. what he's supposed to do versus man-to-man. Versus cover two, like what we saw in the game, his job is to run and literally sit in between that little window right. in between those two, that middle linebacker and the outside linebacker or nickelback. Right. He's supposed to just sit there. Just literally, there's a guy on my left, there's a guy on my right. If I need, if he needs an outlet, I'm here. I'm not going to be able to do anything with the ball once I get it, but I'm right here and I'm just going to post up. He didn't do that. He was running the route as if it was man-to-man, meaning that he ran to that middle linebacker, he set him up, and then he broke out as if he was breaking away from that man-to-man coverage. Well, it wasn't man-to-man coverage. It was cover two. So him breaking away meant he was breaking away towards who? Towards that nickelback that was sitting there, literally just doing his job, sitting in space. So bad on C.D. Lamb for not running the route the correct way based upon the defense provided. And then super bad on Dak for not recognizing what the coverage is acknowledging that mm, that's a very small window, even if CD runs the runs this route the right way. And if he doesn't run the route the right way, and he runs it versus like he's running a man coverage. I can't throw the ball. I can't. Two things are going to happen. I'm going to get him blown up because <laughs> he's running out towards another man right. into his own, or it's going to get intercepted. We found out that what happened? Intercepted. Intercepted. Not because somebody was scheming up Dak. Not because they they tr- they out tricked him or smart outsmarted him. This, this dude was just doing his job in one of the most basic, fundamental defenses that you're taught at what age, Nate? Yeah, forever, man. Eight, forever, nine. Yeah, forever. You know, you may not understand you in that coverage, but <laughs> you, <laughs> but that's yeah, what it is. That's what it is. So, for the people out there, that's the explanation of those two particular interceptions. And anything that I'm telling you, anything that Nate's telling you right now are the things that these gentlemen are going to go back on the film and they acknowledge. Yes. This is not scolding. This is this is just the reality. Those are bad reads, bad routes, okay, As particularly on the, <clears throat> on the, CD, um, on the Michael Gallup route. Yeah. Okay, C.D. Lamb was not running it like he should have ran it. Right. But these things, especially on that second interception, is going back to some of the things we saw earlier in the year. The indecisiveness. And the un uh, the, yeah I'm gonna say indecisiveness of CD Lamb and his routes on versus particular coverages, so it appears as if he wasn't clear early in the season, and I broke it down in right. the film room in, uh, for the Cowboys right. on particular route alterations I should say okay there's certain routes that you run and you say hey based upon the coverage you do this okay right. so you might get a route <clears throat> called and you might have up to three three different variations of it based upon what's presented to you defensively early in the year he was trying to figure it out and he seemed very indecisive on what he was seeing also Dak seemed indecisive on what he was seeing and they didn't they were not on the same page so early on we saw a lot of those those routes deeper right across the middle of those safeties right. where the intercept there was, there was interceptions taking place because cd was doing one thing Dak thought he was doing another balls were getting intercepted okay what did Kellen moore do crap well my guys aren't reading things correctly. They're not reading routes. They're not, I mean, they're not reading coverage correctly, so what do I have to do? I got to dumb it down. Yeah. We didn't see that deep middle route. When was the last time you saw interceptions down the field? Yeah. yeah. We didn't see Wow. Right? So people aren't, aren't acknowledging the fact that interceptions early in the year were happening, happening down the field. Happening down the field because of the route combinations right. that he was calling, that Kellen Moore was calling. Kellen Moore has dumbed this offense down to where I'm going to throw everything at 5 to 14 yards. 14 yards on the outside, right? 5 to 8 yards right here in the middle, and that's where a lot of Dak's interceptions were. You know, you know we've been over this uh, a lot. Those who watch this show, let me tell you something. We've been over this, uh, other uh, things that me and Isaiah do together. Uh, one thing we're not – we're not uh, we're not trying to be super critical of these young players. Uh, we're not trying to tell you whether you should make a decision on whether they should be here or not. But our job is to tell you what we see. Analysts. Now you can go. How do I? 
I don't have to put it gently. We're doing our show. Absolutely. Yeah, you can go to the other folks that don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. Are they getting a second or third party opinion? That's You do what you want to make yourself feel good. But the way this game ended was not right. Your quarterback came out and owned this. And he said, you know, and the popular said, well, he'd been promising, he'd been promising. The difference between this promise and the last promises is he going to have a whole offseason. He's going to have a – it ain't on a week-to-week basis. When he, I'm telling him, go out for two or three weeks, go wherever you go, cool down, reflect, uh, yep, get, find your inner peace. Yep. You know, mine is with God. You, yours may be with God. I hope it is. Yep. Maybe somewhere else, but – Hope is with God. Find your inner peace. You can press. Yep. Yeah. And then come back Go work. and take you. Look at each. It, this is how I look at film. I go through all of it. You yep. Know, all of them. I, I, I just watch just as a fan. Yep. And then I. Then the why. Yeah. W-H-Y. Yeah. Then, the, the, then the why. What was I thinking? Assuming, because I don't want my receivers there at first, because eventually they're going to be with me. Mm -hmm. I'm asking myself why. Then I'm going to get with a coach and see what he's saying. Is me and him on the same page or a different page? And then I'm going to start bringing in my players. Mm -hmm. You got a whole offseason to do this. Yeah. And you've already had your two or three weeks uh, to chill, to find your peace. Your offseason now should be based on this will never happen again. Absolutely. And uh, I, I, me as Nate Newton, you know, uh, you can call me successful, non-stuff, whatever you believe. But I even had to have a couple of years where I wasn't satisfied with who I was and how I played. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and you and, and you what, had to what redefine. Was your, what was your mindset when you went into those off seasons? You just. My first one was when I first saw the uh, – in Tampa, when I first saw the Giants win a Super Bowl. Mm. And then I realized, I'm like, I'm better than – this is just how I yeah, think. for I, sure. I'm better than any of them offensive linemen. But one thing I realized, you know, because you hear the, the announcers talking about how they work during the offseason. Mm. I didn't do that. Mm. How they dedicated themselves to their craft. You know, whether you do it – 10% more, 20% more, 100% more than what you normally do, you got to do something mm -hmm. if you want to get better while you're in the prime of your career. And Dak has never had this in his career happen to him. So I'm praying the light switch come on. And like I said, when, 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 when I see Dak, I, I know I don't have to say, hey, man, well, I hope you're yeah. working harder. He's not that guy. You know this kid going to work harder. Yep. But the, But – Coach Johnson always say this right here, and I believe this with all my heart. Are you a mule or are you a thoroughbred? Hmm. People say, what do you mean? A mule, you just hook him up to a harness, and you just let him pull straight. Yeah. A thoroughbred, you got to treat him right. He going he he to he ask for something extra, so you got to give him something extra. Yeah. That means he's a little bit smarter. You just can't every day, oh, well, let him out to the in the corral okay. and bring him back and just hook him up. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. With with that said, we <clears> had this conversation on the Cowboys platform yesterday. In terms of Dax, I, I consider Dak to be a thoroughbred. Right, right. I'm gonna put him in that conversation. Right. Simply because this is not this is a bad year for Dak. Yes, just call it call a spade a spade. Right, bad year. Okay, you don't want to have a bad year, but the reality is some people have bad years. Okay, some people are more. High profile, right? Area, and a lot more glass bowl ish right, right, <laughs> when, right. when, you, when you're playing a quarterback position, especially right. for this organization. You're gonna get everybody's gonna be on your head, and it's gonna be a hard, rough offseason. But I truly believe that Dak, along with some others, okay, need more accountability. And I believe that there was a gentleman in that building at one point in time who was holding Dak in his development right. responsible okay. and accountable. Okay. And he's no longer in that building. And I don't know that Dak is receiving what he used to receive when he was, was a part of the organization. Do you know who I'm referring to? No, nah, no. Nah. John Kitna. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Kitna being there. 
And uh, I hear I hear Jesse Holly talk about Kitna, but uh, you know, I, but I don't know in person. I just Correct. speak to him. Yeah. So I don't know much about Doug Nussmeyer. I see him. I say what's up. Um, seeing as obviously he was a good player, all that jazz. Right. But I don't know how much of a role he's playing in the development or the the non development of Dak. What I do know is when most of Dak's the largest performance jump that we've seen out of Dak, who was his quarterback coach? Yeah, Kitna. Kitna. Yeah. Okay. And I know Kitna personally. Big, big time spiritual, big time right. God, God fearing man. Like right. just a just a by the book guy. Right. No nonsense. At one heck of a competitor, right? And he's gonna hold you responsible. He gonna hold you right. responsible. I hope. Not saying that I want somebody to lose their job, but I'm saying I hope that this organization identifies. Let's go back in the history and see, okay, when was this man developing? When was he coming right. along, right? When did he make his jumps in growth and identify, hey, there's a gentleman who who played a big role in that. Now, I don't know what transpired to lead him to not be in there anymore, so that's I can't speak right. on that. Right. But I, I hope if there is an opportunity to bring him back, I hope that he, they're able to do that because I think that he will play a huge role in Dak getting on track and being the deck that he wants to be and everybody else expects of him as a quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. See, uh, you know, I got into it with some gentlemen, you know. Uh, you threw some hands? No, 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 because th- this, you, in the NFL, this is what you have to realize. Some quarterbacks' windows, windows are going to always be open. Correct. Right. Because they are that good. Yeah. that good. So when you pay them a third of your salary cap, Ooh. it doesn't take away from their effectiveness. But some quarterbacks need talent around them. And uh, so they so their reads will be less. Mm. And so you have to decide, or better still, the Cowboys have to decide, okay. What do we have? Is Dak worth the third of our salary cap? Can he lift up those other guys? Or do we need to go get those impact receivers? Are the impact offensive line? Or how are we going to hold handle the Tony Pollard situation? Uh, those are questions the organization has to an- answer. But I do know this right here. And like I told those young, them, them fellas yesterday, you know, guys that I respect, they're going to have to do something with this season. Uh to me this was this was worse than last year. Last year Philly, I mean excuse me, last year San Francisco just came in here and bully balled us. Yeah they did. So people say, oh this hurt worse. You know what? You 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 <laughs> you don't know football. Because mm-hmm. last year, what did I say after the first drive? You just had a chance. That's a game over. Yeah you just had a chance. Bully ball to death. This game didn't go that way, people. Correct. And, and you guys hear Nate talking we about... We supposed to win. We had a better quarterback. I, I agree. He didn't play the best. But nah, he didn't play the best. It's, it's, so people out there that are making an argument right now. Oh, Purdy, Purdy outplayed Dak. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Purdy's not better than Dak. No. Nah. Don't don't misconstrue those two right. statements. Right. Okay. Dak is a good quarterback. He just needs the right system. Yeah. And he, he needs, needs a coach in his ear. He needs a coach in he his ear. He needs a voice. You got to... So when I speak to the accountability, and again, this is all speculation for me because I'm not in the locker room, okay, or the meeting rooms. Hey, man, can you do me a favor? What's man? that? I mean, I've been just been. Is the green about them Seahawks, man? I mean, the little hat, man. Listen, I mean, here, man, listen, you, listen. We got we got the number five pick in the draft coming up, <laughs> Nate. You know what I'm saying? We got to start. I got to start paying some attention yeah. to who's coming out. You know, okay. I got some work to do. Right. You know, right. are you going down to the Senior Bowl? You going? I'm not. I don't have no plans to. But if you going, I might go. Okay, we need to call Scott. All right, let's talk. To yeah, him. Scott and, and Chris Bean. And see right. if we get down there. All right, bet. I'm with it. Um, oh, but now nah, you can't go. You try to scout for the Seahawks. We no, nah, 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 you try to pull nah, that on big news. You try to hit me with that <laughs> logic, dog. No, no, you can't go. This about us to cow. This, this what? Hey, man, y'all keep an eye on this. Let me tell you something. He would try to hit. He tried to <laughs> throw the logic on what me again. Mean? I work for the Cowboys. Nah. I work for the. Oh. I'm a, See, Nate, so you are, you're a fan of the Cowboys, and you work for the Cowboys. I'm a fan of the Seahawks, and I work for the Cowboys. This dude tried to throw that old twisted logic on me again, <laughs> man. 
Hey, so I would Why love to go. That, I've man. never been to the senior, but I'd love to go. Oh man, this is. I would love fun. to go because I've it's never, fun. I've never really paid attention All to. All you it. do is sit up there, be cold, yeah. writing players that you like and seeing the. Oh, you, it's fun. It's All right, fun. let's go. Yeah. Let's go. When is it? Yeah. Uh, we got got to get with Chris Beam. Let's he get, knows. Let's yeah. figure it out. Uh, you know your boy used to go. Uh, he ain't going this year. KY. I know. K- Kyle. I know. I'll replace him. Bro, you, I ain't going to replace him. I ain't replace his production. Yeah. But I'll replace his, <laughs> his position. <laughs> his position. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, seriously, I want to go over that. Um, so you guys heard Nate talking about salary cap. And you guys are probably wondering, what's, what the heck is he talking about? Okay, salary cap is the budget. That's the budget. for each. Each team has a budget that they have to – have their whole team underneath, right? For that year, that's right. Okay. Now there's cash. There's 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 a certain certain guys have more hits to the cap than others. Doesn't mean that that's their salary for that's the year. Nice a pie, Mister Jones. Yeah, be talking about. Doesn't mean that that's their salary for the year, but based yeah. upon the structure of their contracts, right. that's how it works out against the team. Right. So you guys hear about Nate talking about a third of the salary of the cap and all that jazz. Well. This year, let me see what the number was this year, the 2022 salary cap, okay? The 2022 NFL salary cap was $208 million. Yeah. Okay, so of that $208 million this year, Dak was only taking up 9% of the cap. cap. Yeah. That means that you had 90% of your team, 91% of your team, you could still fill in the gaps. Right. Next year, 220 is an expected number. The number yeah. hasn't officially came right. out yet, but the expected number is 220. It usually goes right. up a little bit, okay? Dax hit next year, $49 million. Yes. yes. $49 million divided by 220 accounts for 22%. You almost at that 30% mark. 22% of your available money to pay for your entire team, your entire roster, is going to one player. How do you feel about that in your current state, Nat? It, it, Nate? It is not as bad as I thought, and I'm glad you went through those numbers so that people can actually see it and feel it. Uh, this is – I'm not going to answer your question because this is what I feel. This is what – me and you know, you know, uh, sometimes I've always respected coaches. Like me and Coach Johnson was never friends, but he coached me. And then sometimes me and him would drink a beer together. Mm. Tony Wise, me and him are friends now, but he coached me. Uh, Joe Bugle, the great Washington uh, Commanders offensive line coach who had the, the Hogs back in the day. I heard him tell his players after a preseason game. He said, fellas, love you to death. Go out and drink with y'all. But this, y'all just put on the field, this ain't happening. Mm-hmm. This ain't how we work and how we do it. And if you're never going to be critiqued or coached as a player, who – can you grow? Yeah. Because in your mind, when less than the best is acceptable, you don't grow. Coach Johnson has always said, when, when, when players start talking about I feel good, coach, I'm leveling off, I give them another challenge. Mm. Because if you start leveling off, I don't need you because you, that's the first step to falling down. Mm. So I believe this right here. Dak. They say he's a great leader. Don't doubt it. They say he's a hard worker. Don't doubt it. But now it's time to be that thoroughbred. Yeah. It's time to be that hard worker. Attack several things or weaknesses in your game, wherever they may be. I'm not going to say what it is. Correct. But get with somebody. Who's going to hold you accountable. Of authority. Yep. Of authority. Yep. And say, hey, man, break me down. Absolutely. Yeah, that requires you to be humble. And I think yeah. he is. I think yeah. he is. Yeah. I, I got a I got a what if for you. Okay. It's a say it with your chest moment. We haven't had mm. one of those in a minute, Nate. Yes, dog. Okay, I just talked about the salary cap hit by Dak Prescott. It's gonna be $49 million. Right. Got a scenario for you, Mr. Dallas. Okay. okay. Big time Dallas fan. You you the number three Dallas fan. That's right. Okay. Behind Jerry Double J and, and, and your boy Mike. Yes, sir. Proud to carry that. If you had an opportunity, Mr. GM. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Will McClay, Jerry Jones, whoever yeah, you want to yeah. title as a GM. I'll be whatever okay. you need me to be. Whatever you need to be. Set me free. 
and you could do a swap. Green Bay Packers get on the phone. Say, we'll trade you straight up. Aaron Rodgers. I, don't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, Nate. You know no, 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 no. I'm doing it, Nate. Come on, but I, no, 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 no. I, I, I have to do this. I need you to say it with your chest. Straight up. Because Aaron Rodgers is most likely not going to be back with, with them. And Aaron Rodgers is $31.6 million hit against the cap this year. 31.6 if he returns to Green Bay. $49 million for Dak. But Would you a, swap yes. John Wick for Dak Prescott yes. straight up, knowing that Aaron Rodgers only has one or two years left? Yes. Without yes. a doubt. Not even a question mark. Nah. It, it, it's, certain, it's certain quarterbacks. I, man, I, I can love Dak. I, I love you, bro. <laughs> I love you, but, you, but Jay, they tell me yeah. I can get Jerry Rice. You gone, player. I'm gone. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Mahomes, mm. no matter what his cap it is. Yeah. Burrow. Uh, Burrow, no matter what his cap it is. Yep. You, you talking about you talking about the 1% of the 1%. Absolutely. Tom Brady. I, I've seen, see, I don't ask who the receivers is with these guys. Fear them. I don't worry about who to. Re- yeah. So uh, I wouldn't dare do that to Dak, man. I wouldn't dare do that. To, I wouldn't dare uh, put him up against that. But what I will do is challenge the Joneses to put better players around him. If you want to take advantage of that 22% against the cap, put better players around him. If, and if, don't let Dan Quinn. Oh, he gone. Dan, let, let me say this right he here. He gone, Nate. Understand this. Let me tell you something. There's <laughs> always a moment in this show. You better pay Let him. me tell you something. You better pay him 22%. If Dan Quinn leaves, uh, Dak will feel it more than anybody. Yes, sir. Because you're going to ask more of them. Yes, sir. So with your chest, you will swap Dak in a heartbeat for Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Yes. You, you think that's on the table for them? I think. I think. No, uh, it's not. You don't think, think You don't think McCarthy would do a reunion with Aaron Rodgers to yes, go out there and chase a ring? Yes, he would. This is the thing you got to understand. Woo, you, you, Nate, you, you put Dak at a disadvantage. Sounds, you put good. Dak at a disadvantage. That sounds good, Nate. You know, that put, that put Dak at a disadvantage. <laughs> you know, that's like saying, hey, Nate, uh, even though I'm a Hall of Famer, I am a, I, let me tell you something, I am a Hall of Famer. Yeah, right, you are. But you can't say, Nate, yeah. uh, would you would you take Nate or Larry Allen? People gonna be like, come on, man, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Hey, just make sure when, when they make when they call you, I just need a seat. Yeah. I just need to be there. You should have been there. I'm already in there. I know what well, you know, you know, black you know that. Yeah, but, yeah, but I got when, my place. Yeah, you know, I tried to go to that one. I couldn't make that one. But don't, the next don't one, worry about it. But you know, I got you. You know, I tried. I got I had you. a reservation. You got on some black today. All you right. good with already. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so that okay, so, green hat on. Uh, so hey, let's hear. Nate. You ain't no cracking. I, I, this, this you the ain't first, no cracking. I think I'm the first person to bring that scenario up. But that's why I'm not a GM. Because I, I would do it. Well, I would, and I would make the call. Ain't no. I would make the call. ASAP. Oh, you're going further. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm making the call. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You're going further. You, Get, it's, a big, it's more you, than a what listen if because you're going to make the call. This is your scenario. Right. You got a Jordan Love that you that you not 100% on. He's a good talent, but right. you're not 100% on. Okay. You got an Aaron Rodgers who got you who got you handcuffed right now. He's controlled you in multiple ways. You really don't want to keep him, but the whole freaking state of Wisconsin loves this man to death, and he, you guys wouldn't be anywhere without him. But you need to get rid of him. You also need to make sure that you have somebody that you that you trust and that, that you can build the organization behind after after Aaron Rodgers is gone. You don't know Jordan loves that guy. I give you that. I'm, I'm like this, my friend. How many years? No disrespect. Double J's a man. He knows his, his years. Right. All of our years are going away every single year. Right. Okay? His ultimate goal is what? Who that? J, Double J. You talking about? Jones. Mr. Jones. What's his ultimate goal every year? Come on, Nate. I know what his ultimate goal is, brother, to try to win a Super Bowl. Who but gives you the you, best chance? John Wick. So why would you not pull the trigger? They're not gonna get rid of that. That that ain't never been their nature. I understand. That ain't never been their nature. I'm, I, they I, I agree. With that. You know, I agree, Nate. But guess what? Desperation, depending on your situation, causes you to do, do things outside your character. Okay. So you saying the Cowboys desperate? I say they should be. Okay. 
How many years has it been since y'all won? Since you won a ring, Nate? It's been a lot of years. You've been a lot. You was the last one to win a ring, right? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. All right. Well, you don't waste a lot of my time with that foolishness, man. I ain't. <laughs> Hey. Dan Quinn will be back. No, Nate. See, I was going to leave it alone. I was going to leave it alone because we already, this is the longest I think I, we've ever gone on the show okay. aside from having a guest. Just but listen, I'm going to say, say this, one, on I'm gonna get this with, my, with my chest. I love Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn's my dude. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look right at you. I was, one of the, I was the first one to tell everybody in Cowboys Nation Dan Quinn was going to change the culture of this team. You remember that, Nate? Yeah, I remember that. First one. Okay, sit up and there and talk. He did defensively. He did. He changed the whole culture and the expectation of that side of the ball. Flipped it on its head. Turned it from one of the, the worst defense in the league to the most feared defense in the league at one point in time. Last year, Dan Quinn said, "You know what? Just got here. Turned the things around. I got some young bulls. I want to give it a chance. Right? Are you going to lead, Dan? Nah, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna pass on the Denver Broncos. I'm gonna pass on all these other opportunities. Another year." Your defense balls out again. Your defense puts you in a situation. You do your job. Yeah. To the greatest of the of your possible ability. Right. You shut down four of the five top weapons for the 49ers. Yes, shut sir. them down. If you shut one of those guys down, hey, you know what? Good Happy job. Hands. You shut down four of the five. Four of the five. Yeah. Still wasn't good enough. So now winning is beyond your control. Correct? That's right. Winning's beyond your control. You've done a great job of bringing in free agents, guys that you put, you, you handpicked and said, I need this guy on my team. Okay? Curse, Fowler, all these other pieces, you know, Jonathan Hankins, all Went these other guys. Worked out Sam Williams. Come on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Went out and got Sam Williams because, yeah. you know, you, you know you, the, the boss man wanted them and you are, you signed off on them. They wanted other guys. They said, no, nah, I need, we need him. Not enough. Brought Donovan Wilson into the, he was already a good player, but he said he had a vision for Donovan Wilson and made sure that vision came true. And guess who's a free agent this year? Donovan Wilson. So I'll say all this to say, if you're Dan Quinn and you passed on the first opportunity, and let's not get this mistaken, Dan Quinn took an organization in Atlanta Falcons, took them from, from crap, and took them back to the Super Bowl. Now, what happened at the Super Bowl, that's a whole other story. Right. But he got them there. They had a chance. Right? We're talking about a chance. He passed on one opportunity. You truly in your heart think he's going to pass on two? He's coming back. He's coming back. Nate, what, which Nate is saying that? I'm saying it with my mind. I'm saying it with my chest. Your heart? I'm saying it with everything I You're got. You're saying it with your heart. You're saying yeah. it with your emotions. My, 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 with everything I got. <laughs> your loins? You said it with your back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Rumbling loins. Yeah, rum. Yeah. Hey, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all right now. I don't know where he's going. I don't think he wants to leave. But I think he's he gone. Gonna, I think he's gonna look at the scenario. He's gone, man. He's gonna look at the scenario. He's gone. He's gone. Going right back to the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> star. That's where he's going. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Going right back to the Cowboys star. I'm Thank sorry. you. I'm sorry. Y'all Love heard, you. Y'all heard it here first. Um, let me tell you something. Dan Quinn gone. Nah. Give him a high five on the way out. Yes, sir. He's done an amazing job. There's a lot of work this Cowboys organization is gonna have to do this offseason because. Your fearless leader, he gone. You know who else is gone? We gone. We're going to see y'all next time on Let Me Tell You Something. <laughs>